Спаслави Божественной Твоей силою, не остави нас уповающих на Тя. Мир, мир, ведь Твоим ударой, всяким Твоим священникам, во всем людям Твоим. Яко всякое даяние благое, всяк дар совершен свыше есть. Хозяин Тебя, Отца Света, по Тебе славу и благодарение и поклонение воссылаем. Отцу и Сыну и Святому Духу, ныне и присно. We celebrate the, uh, the feast day of the Iberon icon of the Mother of God, as well as the Holy Fathers of the Seventh Ecumenical Council. Uh, and we heard the gospel today, in addition to the gospel for the, for the council, uh, of the sower, the parable of the sower. And I think, in, since we all know that, that parable, we need to think about How is the seed of the Word of God implanting itself in our hearts and in our lives? What kind of transformation is being wrought in our lives by the Word of God? Are we conforming our lives to the Word of God? Are we conforming ourselves and our minds and our hearts to the, uh, to the commandments, the teachings, and the life of our Savior? In other words, Are we allowing ourselves, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, to be transformed into icons of Christ? Each and every saint is an icon of Christ. Of course, we have the painted icons, we have carved icons, we have icons that are cast in metal. But the most important iconography is the iconography that each one of us do with our lives. So that, so that each one of us becomes a living, breathing icon, a revelation and a manifestation of the presence of Jesus Christ in the midst of the world. The concept of the icon, I don't want to turn this into an academic lecture, you guys have enough of that, right? Uh, the concept of the icon, to put it in theological language, is one of the fundamental structural concepts of orthodoxy. There's like three or four, and you've got all of orthodox theology. But uh, what, it, what it comes down to is that this concept of the icon is that God has come to us in the flesh. He has taken matter into himself. He was incarnate, right? He took matter into himself And he was, he was born as a man. Who is man? What is man? But the, but the image of God, the created image of God. Who is the son of God? But the uncreated image of God. And in Jesus, the two come together, the created and the uncreated, so that the created is lifted up to the uncreated and partakes of immortality. And so that matter is filled with grace, matter itself, the, the wood and the paint of the icon, the bread and the wine of the Eucharist, the uh, oil of chrism, the water of baptism, and most important of all, because it's the goal of all of these various things, is that our very flesh becomes filled with the grace of God and is transformed and is deified and made to be a partaker of the kingdom of heaven even now here in this life. What makes the, what makes the painted images so important for us is not that they're nice pieces of art and have value on the market and all of that kind of nonsense. What's important for us is that the image not only is a manifestation, a, a, a kind of a portrayal of the person involved, a portrayal of the saint or of Christ or, or of the mother of God, 
but it's a manifestation and a revelation of their presence. Because, and we especially are able to experience this when we have these wonderful and holy uh, miracle-working icons, such as the icon here before us, which, which uh, so abundantly weeps myrrh, which is a kind of a side thing. Because the most important thing about this holy icon is that when we come up and when we are in her presence, when we venerate her, we experience in, our, in the depths of our being the presence of the Mother of God, right? We all know that she is here with us. We experience it intuitively. We experience it noetically, spiritually. And, we, and it's kind of like a shortcut to communion to come and venerate these holy icons. Because it's not that the other icons don't have the same thing, they do. It's that our senses are closed to it. In a sense, an icon is a sacrament. And in a sense, we don't pay enough veneration, we don't pay enough attention to the holy icons. Because they're not only a revelation in form and image of the presence of God and the presence of the saints. But by venerating them, we connect with Christ. We connect with the saints. We experience their presence in our lives. And they come to us and, and, are, and accompany us and are with us as we, as we tread the, the paths of this life. Not all icons, of course, are... Uh, you know, abundantly uh, weep myrrh like, like this holy icon. But those icons, all the icons, think about the icons in your, own, in your own icon corner. When you go before them, don't you experience the presence of God? When you come into the, into the, into the holy temple, of course, which is consecrated to be an icon of the kingdom of heaven, a place where the glory of God dwells, we come into the holy temple and we, ex and we experience God's grace, we experience God's presence. So also it should be when you, even when you come before your icons uh, to pray, you, it's an experience of God's grace and of his presence, <clears throat> of his love, of his forgiveness, of his consolation. It's not just that we come to, come to him with arms open in, in, in a gesture of supplication. It's that he receives us with open arms into the bosom of his love. And so, <clears throat> and so it is that we experience through this holy icon that embrace of the love of the mother of God who comes to us, who heals us, who consoles us, who, who brings us spiritual joy who brings us consolation. But the whole point is not just that, that uh, we have and give thanks to God that we have because many people gave their lives so that we could have holy icons. It's not just that we have nicely painted churches with lots of, you know, lots of kind of spirit, you know, spiritually oriented decoration. It's that we step into the church and the icons reveal to us the kingdom. Remember in the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom in the priest prayer, Saint John, the, uh, we pray every Sunday, for you have brought us up to heaven and endowed us with your kingdom which is to come. Isn't that the experience of coming into the church, into the holy temple? But the goal of all of that is so that each one of us might actualize and realize in our own life that we are icons of Christ, that we manifest his presence in the midst of the world, that, pe that, we, should, that we should be able to be the very substance of his presence in this broken world. And to bring that same joy and healing and consolation and forgiveness 
to all the people who are out, out there, whether they're Orthodox or not, whether they know anything about Jesus or not, we should, our lives should reveal Jesus to them. And most especially, reveal his love, his, his forgiveness, his compassion, and, and his absolutely non-judgmental openness to receive them with open arms. We're all iconographers, every one of us. The icon is our lives that we are painting, that we are writing. Brothers and sisters, by our actions, by how we unite our life to the will of God, by how we unite our will to the will of God, we move from image to likeness. And that quality of image is then fulfilled in our lives. So that God works through us, through his grace, and through his compassion. It's always God working through us. It's always God working through the holy icons. It's always his grace that the saints impart to us. It's not their own. It's not their own. It's the grace of God that is imparted to us by the prayers, uh, by the icons, by the relics of the saints. But if you go to somebody who's in, who's in sorrow and you console them, it's the grace of God working through you that brings them joy and healing. If you go to somebody who's hurting and you help to, to heal them, it's the grace of God working through you that brings that, that healing. We're not only static images of God, we're living revelations of his presence. So beloved in Christ, as we celebrate the seventh ecumenical council and the holy fathers who struggled in that uh, for, the, uh, for the sake of the icon, remember that, that uh, you, all of us together, are the icons that God is painting by his grace. We have to let him do it and cooperate with him. But you are the icons that God is painting for the sake of the world and for its salvation. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always now and ever and unto ages of ages.